Oh, hi there. It's a really strange intro, but I'm going to go with it. Um, so I got a couple of things before we get to the main event over here. Uh, first off, after a three-month stint, sloth, sloth, uh, marathon. Uh, it wasn't really a marathon because there were actually significant gaps in there. Uh, I finally finished watching Denji Sentai Mega Ranger on DVD, courtesy of uh, Shout Factory. Oh, God. Like, and I'm not even going to try to avoid spoilers or anything like that. But it's 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 a it, it's another early-ish Sentai that I'm kind of glad that I, I've seen it and it's done, and I don't have to think about it anymore. I had the same reaction to Jew Ranger. Um, Die Ranger was okay. Actually, it's gotten to the point where I've forgotten most of these these shows because it's been a, it's been a few years now. So, like, I saw Jew Ranger two years ago, three years ago at this point, and it's probably two years ago at this point, so I've completely forgotten it. And then Die Ranger was shortly there afterwards, and I've almost completely forgotten that. Um, and then Kaku Ranger was... I remember it wasn't great. It was it was okay. I wasn't thrilled with it. I think of, of all the Shout Factory DVDs of, of Super Sentai that have come out, I think the first one that I actually like really got into and really enjoyed was ironically the one that didn't do very well in Japan, uh, and you could very much see why, and that is O Ranger. I actually enjoyed O Ranger, Chor Choriki Sentai O Ranger. I enjoyed that show. Uh, yeah, it was a little, it was a little jarring them bouncing back and forth because I mean originally it was written as a serious Super Sentai, but then when they had their, uh, they had a, the the sarin gas attack, the the sarin gas attack, Tokyo subway bombing as we know it. It was it was in in '96, you know, they kind of flattened the country, and they're like, <gasps> and they had to kind of catch their breath for a couple of months there, and it affected production of the show, uh, and so you can kind of see that that Toei was trying to float back and forth between, you know, we want to keep the original tone of the show, but at the same time, let's give let's give the children of this country a little bit of levity, let's let's lighten the mood, and so we have things like. Um, O Ranger Robo and O Blocker playing basketball and doing gymnastics, and that, that that's one of the more extreme examples of the crazy. Uh, and there was a legitimate reason for it to happen in in the show. There was a reason for it, but um, it was you could tell. But by the time we got to, I don't know what it is about Super Sentai, but I think it's like they start well. And then just kind of blah and blah and blah and blah and blah stuff happens for 48 episodes or 40 episodes or so. And then for the, like the last five or six where it's actually a continuous arc that starts with the villains finally making their big push to defeat the heroes and to, to the final episode, then it gets it starts getting good. And so I think O-Ranger is one of those where it's like it started strong and then the, the rest of the series happened and towards the end, okay, all right, now it's getting good. Um, so, so, you know, that happened. Um, and then Car Ranger happened immediately after that, and it was supposed to be a parody of itself, but honestly, watching, like, nowadays, I mean, if I had seen it back when it aired in 96, right? Yeah, Car Ranger was in 96, because Car Ranger's Turbo was in 97, right? So... If I had seen uh, Car Ranger originally, I probably would have found it hilarious. Just as, oh, you silly Japanese, you know, what do you guys know? And, and you know, I would have thought of it that way. But then, having seen the likes of uh, the, the little bit of the ninja that I forced myself to watch and the maybe one episode of Juoger that I watched. And then the, in, well, I, I guess I can't really throw um, Q-Ranger under the bus. That Q-Ranger wasn't bad. Uh, it started out kind of weak, but in my opinion, it built up and it got better and better over the time, and then it dropped it in the very last episode. So, But, uh, yeah, Car Ranger was, eh, is okay. And so here it is. Okay, uh, you know, Car Ranger... By the way, if you're hearing random booms and bangs, it's July 3rd as I'm recording this, so, you know, everybody's prepping. Um, there's a fireworks show that's 
a couple miles away. It's about 20 minutes away from where I live, so um, fireworks shows will be kicking off right about now. Um, at least the the July 3rd. Anyways, um, so like Car Ranger was it was okay in Japan. It wasn't it wasn't a great show, but people could live with it, and it was strange and was silly and whatever. Um, but I I didn't. I didn't think much of it. I, I thought it was going to be like a laughs a minute because oh it's a parody of Super Sentai. It's a parody of everything. They, and then, and that's what I'd heard. That's what I'd read online. But when I got to Car Ranger and actually saw it for myself, I was like, it might. There might be parody moments. There might be satirical moments in here, but I'm not seeing them. Or they're spaced so few and far between, it just it, it doesn't make any difference. To me, Car Ranger didn't really make any difference. It, it wasn't really a standout compared to any of the others. Not from the reputation it had from uh, people who had originally seen it before Shout, before Shout Factory released it, keep in mind. Um, there was just, oh, Car Ranger is a parody, it's hilarious. And, and, and then I saw it for myself, and I'm like... You know, if it's meant to poke fun at not just itself, but also at Super Sentai in general, I'm not getting it. I'm not feeling it. And, you know, I, I, I can put up with some parody here and there, and I can put up with Super Sentai kind of, uh, okay, it's cute and it's funny, whatever. Um, watching Engine Sentai Gowanja, for example, you could tell it was poking fun at itself, and you could tell they were kind of reaching for things and and just slapping it together and and then poking fun at it so okay whatever you know you know mecha that have uh super vehicles that have animal faces on the front and have animal characteristics on them but they're still cars and buses and aircraft and stuff like that so it's like okay it's a one-time thing just 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 leave, okay we're, we're just gonna accept it for what it is we'll just go with it and it'll, it'll be fine just leave car leave go on your alone leave it alone it's fi it's fine it's fine leave it alone uh but you know car ranger yeah, whatever uh and so i was looking forward to mega ranger because like the galaxy mega design the the uh why didn't they call it the galaxy megazord i'm curious why didn't they? Because it's like, it's just there. Galaxy Mega, Galaxy Megazord, it was just there. But for whatever reason, they went with Astro Megazord. Anyways, the Astro Megazord, Galaxy Mega, is one of my favorite Sentai Mechas ever. Not not just in its vehicle mode, but also in its robot mode, and the weapons it has, and it's it's one of my unquestioned favorites. I mean, the power of the Astro Mega ship is ridiculous. It can g literally go from one side of the universe to the other, and really does put the Millennium Falcon to shame. It really, really does. So, uh, yeah, I would like you know, hey Ava, if you ever if you ever had a chance to pilot your own ship, if you had the chance to own your own ship, which one would it be? For me, it would be the Astro Mega ship. Um, assuming it could transform, of course. Uh, and it, it was strange from my perspective because, like, I've always known all these combining robos, and so to sit and watch it, and and I saw bits and pieces of of Power Rangers in space when it aired. I, I wasn't following it closely. I didn't, uh, so I don't know most of the story arcs and things like that. But watching Mega Ranger, God, it almost makes me want to watch Power Rangers. So I, I can't believe that a Super Sentai was 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 such a marathon, a, a three month marathon that it makes me want to watch the U.S. version. And I've kind of heard that about the difference between Mega Ranger and PRAS is that In Space was actually better received and it was better produced and and all these things because it actually kind of did the things that they should have done in Mega Ranger. Mega Ranger is about high schoolers and their senior year. Uh, which, it's not like Power Rangers didn't do that, whatever. But, like, I, I, don't, I don't go for that, that, that type of show. I just, I, like, my high school years, whatever. Um, I had bizarre high school years. Well, I shouldn't say bizarre, which is, they were unusual. Um, but, like, just, they were, Mosquito, I, uh, it actually got to the point where, when I'm watching the preview for the next episode, I think I outright skipped two episodes. I didn't do that with Jew Ranger, I didn't do that with Cocker Ranger, I didn't do that car with Car Ranger. 
At least I don't think I skipped any in Car Ranger. It was only six months ago when I saw it. Um, but yeah, I actually skipped like two episodes. And then I jumped through... Uh, not even recap episodes. It was like, and, and there was... I think there was one, maybe two recap episodes. Like, right after they did the New Year's episode, they did a recap episode, because all the kids are coming back after their, their New Year's vacations and whatever. Um, and just... Ugh. And it wasn't just the... It wasn't just the high schooler scenario. It was also... Um, the acting, the motivations for characters, and just the plain of the dialogue, the script... If 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 the uh, translations are to be trusted, I was not a big fan of the of the script. There was just, just I'm glad I'm done with Mega Ranger, so I can I can just put it to bed. And it wasn't even a strong villain. And then when the the Neji Rangers show up and they're like, oh, they're anti Rangers, you know, they're anti Mega Ranger. And it got to the point I'm like, okay, this is going to be good. This is where the series is going to pick up. And it's like. Okay, they showed up and they did some stuff, and it kind of at the point where like I didn't care. I wasn't quite at the point where I was rooting for the Neji Ranger, but that being said, so I can't really say don't get it, but I would say watch it once and then like I don't know, gift it to a friend or save it for your grandkids or save it for your niece or nephew, something like that. They'll get a kick out of it because why not? So yeah, um, but uh, on the flip side, the good news is I'm now four episodes into Seiju Sentai Gingaman, which I ordered on the same day and got in the same package as uh, as Mega Ranger, and uh, I'm really enjoying that so far. I'm only four episodes in, and I'm already enjoying it, so this, this, this is good. This is encouraging. By the way, I should point out that Mega Ranger, one of the, pro one of the big problems with Mega Ranger is it had one of the lowest budgets in... Um, in, in the 90s uh, Super Sentai's their budget for producing the show not the toys the toys are fine I still like the toys uh, uh, I want to see the Mega Ranger movie now because the because they had the battle riser that they had on on the right arm or that Mega Red had and then Mega Yellow and Mega Black also got one towards uh, towards the end of the series they didn't get to keep it but they they had them or they used them in at least one episode um, but, uh, so, like, yeah, okay, whatever, and it's the controller for the Delta Mega, which I find that a little difficult to believe, um, but, uh, it kind of reminds me of the, um, Gokai Cellular, I think, is what it was called. Yeah, I think it was the Gokai Cellular, anyways, the cell phone. Um, there were a bunch of buttons, and you could punch a bunch of different sequences and it would make a bunch of different noises. But in the show, you only had one sequence that they ever showed in, in Go Kaiju. And that was just the sequence to summon the Go Kai Galleon. And that was it. That's the only time you ever saw the numbers. But in the, in the Go Kai Cellular, or if that's what it's called, I don't remember anymore. Um, there are tons of codes and different things that it says. I kind of feel the same way about the... Uh, Oh, wow. Now, so this tells you how quickly I'm trying to make myself forget about Mega Ranger. I've completely forgotten what the head gene device is called. Wow. I totally forgot what it's called. Anyways, um, there's... And if you look at the actual toy on the, on the little flip-up, the little, little uh, screen flip thingy or whatever it is... Um, there's actually multiple codes. There's a code for summoning weapons, for summoning the, uh, um, was it the cyber sliders that they use? There's one for summoning uh, the mecha, or summoning uh, the the Delta uh, uh, Galaxy Mega, and then for combining the Galaxy Mega. But the only code that you ever see the Mega Ranger use is to transform, which is three three five, and then hitting enter. That's it. So I feel like there was some missed opportunity, and it's the most flashy thing that they can have, and I'm totally forgetting what the stupid thing is called. Do I regret not getting one? Nah. Do I regret not getting one now? Not really. No. Um, it's it's an iconic uh, wrist device, but like I don't care. <laughs> Actually, in my opinion, it's it's still um, 
if if you want to talk about my favorite wrist mounted henshin device, it's still got to be the the Zeonizer, which was the uh, wow, what was that thing called? It wasn't the Aura Changer? Because that's the, uh, uh, wow. How can I forget the name of these things? Now all of a sudden I want to pull it up. I'm, I'm not going to pull it up. Yes, I am. I'm going to pull it up. Arsenal Digitizer. How could I not remember that Digitizer? Okay. So anyway, yeah, am, am, am I... Uh, I just fucking looked it up. How does my brain... How does my brain not work properly? I must be tired or something. I just bloody looked it up. So yeah, the power bracers from O Ranger, the Xeonizer, remains my favorite. Remains to this day remains my favorite wrist-mounted henching device, and I am absolutely looking forward to getting the Legacy Xeonizer. And God damn it, I may not be able to get it. I've only been waiting twenty something years for a an adult size Xeonizer that that has proper wrist straps that'll actually fit me. I have the original ninety six uh, Xeonizer, but the wrist strap doesn't fit me, so I can't use it. I got it years ago. I got it, what, seven or eight years ago. No longer than that. Probably nine or ten years ago. And I wasn't able to review it for Collection DX because, like, the, the straps don't fit. I, cu I couldn't find any replacements. So, I've been kind of stuck there. Um, and now, you know, with Toys R Us gone, rest in peace, uh, which is the only way you could get legacy stuff is through Toys R Us, uh, and then with the Power Rangers brand disappearing from from Bandai America, with them them losing the copyrights or whatever it is, it's entirely possible the legacy Xeonizer is never going to be produced, and I'm just sick. Now, will there be a Super Sentai Artisan uh, Power Bracer? Hopefully, yes. Do I want the Power Bracer version versus the Legacy Xeonizer? Uh, I could, and it would work. And I do like the opening theme for O-Ranger. Okay. But, well, I kind of like it. it, it it's, it's, it's an earworm. Like, once it gets in, it doesn't go away. Um, and there it is. Now it's stuck. Um, dash! Dash! Oranger, dash, dash. I'm way off key when I start that. Um, should I get the Should I get the power bracer? I could. I can. I don't see why not. Probably be a hundred dollars more than the, the the U.S. version. So, yeah. Well, anyways, yeah. Mega Ranger is done, and I'm I'm glad it's gone, and I'm moving on to Ginga Man, and I'm looking forward to it because it's completely different from its U.S. counterpart, and so I'm really... D did you know, I did not know, or at least I didn't remember, that Furios, the character of Furios from Power Rangers Lost Galaxy, was not actually in Gingaman. The costume for Furios is actually the alternate form of the villain, well, I say alternate form, the armored form of the lead baddie, from Mega Ranger. He appears in one episode. It's his armor. You see it in one episode and that's it. And for whatever reason, uh, Saban Entertainment at the time decided to carry it over and use it in uh, Power Rangers Lost Galaxy for some reason. Interesting choice. I, I, I suppose like they felt they could get more mileage out of it or something. So, yeah, Furios was, or, or the Japanese equivalent, was never in Gingaman. He was actually in one episode, in the second, I believe it was the second, yeah, it was the second to last episode of, uh, of Mega Ranger. So imagine my surprise when I saw that. It's like, hmm. It's not like they hadn't done that before, but, in, in Power Rangers, but, oh well. So, yep, I'm looking forward to, uh. I'm looking forward to King of Man, and it, it seems to be getting off to a good start. By the time I got into, like, the fourth episode of Mega Ranger, I was like, oh boy, it's going to be this again. So, yeah. Next up on the list of things for me to discuss... Oh, yeah. I love it. I love it. It's big, dumb fun, but I'm not offended by it, you know? Like, Star Trek and Star Trek Into Darkness... 
they were big and they were dumb, but they weren't fun. At least for the most part, they weren't. Uh, this doesn't try to be smart. Don't expect smart to happen in this movie, but I'm not offended by it, by the fact that it's lack of, 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 of uh, edumacation, I suppose. Is that how you put it? Like, this is, this is, this is just a good movie. This is a fun movie. The first one was good. This one, I kind of scratched my head over a couple of decisions that they made in here, but I can live with it. So, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to doing this. Um, nobody has voiced if they want to see me do more of those Let's Watches. In fact, a number of people have said that I do nice clickbait when I did my Pacific Rim comedy... Uh, uh, commentary in 2014 they said it's clickbait how's that clickbait it says in there it's an audio commentary from me and you're supposed to get your own copy and you're supposed to watch it that's what it says it's let's watch you know it's it's my reactions to watching the movie how how is that clickbait so i don't get it so uh yeah this has come out and i, I there there's like five or six other movies on Blu-ray, obviously, that I've wanted to, um, that I've wanted to do, uh, those Let's Watch commentaries on, uh, but I just haven't gotten to it yet, which is a bad excuse, which is a really bad excuse, but it's the only one I've got, so, you know, there's a couple of movies, like, completely off-kilter from what I usually, um, from what you guys usually see on my channel, uh, there's some off kilter stuff I'd, I'd really like to do, but uh, so yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to watching that again. Oh, that reminds me, have any of you seen the sci-fi dramedy? I guess that's what you could call it. I, I guess it could be a bit of a dramedy. I'm not certain, although it's not really in the drama category. It's called the Orville. Have any of you seen this? I I really enjoy it. Like, obviously it's based off of Star Trek, the original series. It's meant to poke fun at it. And yes, it is made by the exact same guy who created Family Guy and American Dad and The Cleveland Show, Seth MacFarlane. And it's actually his first uh, live-action role where it's him in front of the camera uh, rather than always being behind the scenes or just providing voices. Now he's actually in front of the camera. So, um... And if you're expecting it to be just like the film Galaxy Quest, it kind of is and it kind of isn't. Galaxy Quest was, wasn't was really attempting to be its own thing, although it very much was. Um, but I put Galaxy Quest in the category of being respectful of the thing it's making fun of. Uh, if you want, so so for example, like it is merciless in the portrayal of of the issues that many of the actors and production stuff had, not just with the original series, but also with Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, Voyager. I don't think Enterprise had happened yet when uh, when Galaxy. In fact, I know I hadn't, because Enterprise happened in what 2001 or something like that. Uh, so that it, Galaxy Quest did that, but it was very respectful. It was very, we're not making fun of you to be mean. We're not making fun at you to be mean and point out your flaws. That's not what Galaxy Quest was trying to do. It was just saying, we're just going to poke fun at it. But we're not going to be mean-spirited about it. We're not going to poke holes in all your armor, and we're not going to tear you to pieces. Uh, and what I'm thinking of when I say that specifically... Uh, I'm thinking of the Austin Powers movies, which I've never seen, which I don't plan to watch. I, 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 I don't like the type of humor, and quite frankly, I find all three, three or four of those films highly offensive uh, because they took a time-honored franchise, the James Bond films, and they just ripped into them like there was no tomorrow and it was and and it it it, it was very mean spirited and it was very I want to say discourteous is discourteous a word I'm not certain it was it, it, it I 
like I said, I've seen bits and pieces of it, and it's so over the top, and it's so exaggerated, and the satire is real, and I don't have anything wrong with some of those things, but it was just so cruel in the way it approached its humor. Not crude, although there was that, but it was very not friendly. Like, if you're going to do a parody of something that's that, that's culturally important, and yes, James Bond is culturally important, no questions there, um, we wouldn't have cell phones if it wasn't for James Bond, let's be honest. Um, and we wouldn't have iPads and iPhones and things like that, and we wouldn't have little ear devices, you know, if it wasn't for James Bond coming up with, with many, uh, not all, but many of these things. And flying cars, we're still trying to work on flying cars. So, the Austin Powers films, no, I will never watch them. I will never support them. I mean, I'm mentioning them, but that's as far as I'm going to go. I've, I, you know, I didn't like, as a parody, that I did not like that. And you can tell that MGM and United Artists were embarrassed and humiliated and damn near driven out of business almost driven out of business because of what Mike Myers and and the rest of the production staff for the Austin Powers movies you can tell that those two studios that MGM and United Artists they were embarrassed because they had one of their their one of the few properties that they had they're really really good have an international appeal and then you have this one comedian coming and he just shit all over it and he didn't do it just once he didn't do it twice he did it three times and so it got to the point where you had die another day which i haven't seen which i don't really plan to see either i heard it was a pretty bad film um in addition to being a bad bond entry um die another day was so hokey and stupid and and ridiculous and then austin powers came along and told you exactly why it was so bad or just kind of you know poured salt in the wound with a with a the spritz of lemon on top um that united artists and mgm had to turn around and turn james bond into a very serious stoic stone-faced uncaring assassin no nonsense doesn't crack jokes doesn't uh doesn't always get the girl uh very serious very uh not funny very uh very realistic the gadgets are toned down the cars are toned down the villains are much more realistic they they got burnt oh yes absolutely so i look at what austin powers did to james bond and no i won't support it that was very mean what Austin Powers did to James Bond. I, I really don't like that. Now, contrast that, and coming coming around here, contrast that to um, what the Orville is doing to Star Trek. It's saying, yes, this is an homage to Star Trek. Yes, and we are poking fun out of it. Or we are, po ugh, we are poking fun at it, yes. But, A, we're trying to do our own thing, and B, we're not going to say that what you did in the past was bad. We're just going to point it out, and we're just going to let you make your own decisions at that point. Um, we're also not going to make a parody of the behind the scene. Ugh, I'm sorry, behind the scenes material either. You know, which is what Galaxy Quest did. So I have a tremendous amount of respect for the Orville. It's it's, it's sci-fi shows traditionally their first season if they have more than one season their first season is usually a little rocky because you know they're trying to find their footing and so sci-fi fans will usually they they kind of tone it down they're like okay uh we we like where you're going it needs some refinement we're going to tell you what's wrong we're going to tell you what what works and what doesn't and then when the second season comes along okay you know that works if you watch the first season the complete first season of star trek the next generation Oh, there's some cringy shit in there. Some really cringy shit. The first regular episode, everybody gets naked because they're drunk. Uh, and then the second regular episode is the African planet. 
that are that is ruled by women. Or no, that was the one after that. Uh, I can't think of what that one was. It was it was the the female power, the feminists are returning episode, and uh, those are just within the first three up ep- three regular episodes. That was after Encounter at Farpoint. The first three regular episodes are pretty damn bad. It was pretty damn bad. But you know, eventually it took season two, not not just the death of Tasha Yar, spoiler alert, thirty year old spoiler alert. Uh, it wasn't just the death of Tasha Yar. It was like they actually they rotated through a lot of writers and even some of the producers in those first three years. So it took it took a bit of time, but the Star Trek fans were so ravenous that they didn't want to let go of it because you know, hey, Star Trek is back. You know, you're not gonna you're not gonna shush that away. So the Trekkers were forgiving in the first season, and we said, okay, you know, the, this we like, this we don't like. We're gonna re- do letters to the editor, letters to the studio, letters to the producers, and we will help you to mature this in a direction we think would be beneficial to both sides. Uh, second season of Next Generation was much better, and then the third season they found their stride. Um. And so the same kind of the same thing with the Orville. The Orville is is really good. It the Orville does what the original Star Trek series did. It's just it's being produced in the here and now. That's the only difference. Like they have a budget, so they have uh, good costume designs. They have they they can have more than just an orange or a green or a gray background for an alien sky. Uh, they can actually shoot on location in different locations every time. You know, this is more or less. I mean, yes, it does poke fun at the original Star Trek series, but it it it, it is also trying to be its own thing. It's trying to do what Star Trek did back in the 1960s. Most of the episodes aren't even about, you know, laugh a minute. Yeah, there's some laughs here and there, but there are also significant issues that come up, significant social issues that come up. And I really respect them for doing that. That's something that you're not seeing much of these days. Tales of morality have just kind of disappeared. You know, so, something like The Twilight Zone probably wouldn't happen these days. Something like uh, uh, Fantasy Island probably wouldn't happen, which, which I've never seen, but they were tales of morality, truth and consequences. You know, that that's what those kinds of shows were. So you don't see those very often. What you see instead is reality TV. So I'm looking forward to what's happening with the Orville. All right, I was I was gonna I, I was gonna mention Star Trek Axanar, but I think I've already brought the, I brought that up what a year year and a half ago whatever it is I just looked at their blog uh, was it yesterday or today, and uh, they they are continuing, so uh, here's uh, so so uh, here's hoping that Axanar turns out well. I really hope Axanar turns out well. They can just shove it right in CBS's face. I haven't seen a single... No, I take it back. I saw the first episode only of Star Trek Discovery when it was on CBS, you know, regular broadcast, and that's all I've seen. I, I, I can't even comment on Star Trek Discovery. Like, I saw one episode, and that's all I'm ever going to see because I'm not going to pay, you know, however much to rent an entire channel just for one program that might be interesting. I'm not going to do that. Like, it might be financially successful, but from what I've heard, it's not, from what I've heard, it's not a very good season. And it's kind of disappointing, really. So, mm. so let's see. When did they ship this? It would have been June 21st. And here it is. I got it today on July 3rd. Yeah, it's still July 3rd. Um... Immediately after, well, let me let me back up a little bit. Ah, don't back up that much. Uh, so this guy, I uh, haven't really done a lot with him, admittedly, within within the last you know month or whatever it is since I've gotten. It. I haven't done much with him. Um, I found he's he's surprisingly back heavy. Uh, that 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 caught me off guard. I was I was surprised. I also found out that I've been mispronouncing the name for probably. F- four or five years at this point. Unfortunately, I think I've been watching a few too much Theo Adams uh, videos. He called it Leo Kaiser, and I just assumed it was Leo Kaiser. Turns out that's not the case at all. If you listen listen to the original Japanese version from Transformers Victory, they pronounce it Leo Kaiser. So, if I accidentally slip into Leo Kaiser, you can blame Baru Tazaro. So, anyways, um, 
I haven't really done a lot with this guy. Uh, I will say this much, though. If you swap the tank legs and then put them on the arms, man, does he look beastly. Holy shit. And then what I do is I take the, uh, I'll take the the turret hands or the, 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 the additional gun turrets that they have for this guy and I and I put and I kind of do it a SDF1 style or I'm sorry macro style and I'll put a turret on this side and I'll put a turret on the other side and then I'll take the um, the gun the the main gun or the the drill bit from the two tanks and I'll stick it on the top and the center oh man he is so buff when you put the two tanks on there it looks really really great it's awesome um, what doesn't look awesome is the fact that I'm having to lean him forward significantly because his his heels are really, really tiny. And they have this tendency to shift back and forth. Excuse me, hiccup suddenly, which really doesn't help the balancing at all. Considering how small the feet are, I'm told that this is a common complaint with uh, the Super Sentai. Yeah, right, sure, whatever. Uh, with Combiner Wars, I've heard that this, this was a common complaint, is that the feet were too small because, you know, they were trying to make the hands the same size. Um, you know, they were trying to make everything manageable. So Copy Chan was kind of an exception. Uh, Mega, not Mega, uh, was it Megatroni? No, it was... It was Victorion also had customized feet and, and hands as well. So those are the only two that I'm aware of that had f hands and feet that were different from what are provided in Lyo Kaiser here. Um, the other thing I noticed is that the friction on this one joint in the neck is really, really loose, or at least much more loose than I would like. Like, just after I finished recording... This got re this lost all friction all of a sudden. So I'm having to lean the figure forward in order to make certain it stays in place. And even then, it doesn't like ratchet into position. But on the other hand, I don't want to turn the head around and like stick it down here like this. This is what the instructions say, and the instructions are kind of wrong in that regard uh, because then it sticks down between his legs, and we all know what kind of jokes can be told when you do that with a transformer. So I'm trying to avoid that. But I really don't want to attempt to take apart the neck just to uh, add some, uh, not varnish, vinyl, what's it called? I can't think of what it's called. So uh, I'm kind of on the stuck side when it comes to, to this. So the main reason I'm bringing up Lyo Kaiser is because uh, I found an alternative for his hand. I've got Ion Scythe hanging out here as kind of a... Um, a claw or a hook kind of weapon. I know my hand is blocking it. So that so I solved that problem. And ordinarily the black hands are supposed to be black hands. But uh, you know this 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 is an appropriate alternative. You know so whatever. Uh, but I couldn't. I just couldn't. Or yeah, I just couldn't leave it at that. Like it, it was just bugging the hell out of me. So, uh, on the recommendation from Prime 92, yes, that Prime 92, uh, I went to SirToys.com. Don't you dare tip over. Don't you dare. I went to SirToys and I picked up uh, this. And I got this in the mail today and I noticed. I noticed. I noticed it is very squashed box. Very, very squashed box. This got pulverized in the mail. This is like it got squashed in this direction. And yeah, it, it pretty much got squashed in that direction. So, uh, but, but I mean, look at this. This is ridiculous. It's so, it's so deformed. And it's especially bad on the other side where my name has not been crossed out yet, but you're just going to have to trust me that, uh, well, let's see if I can block this out. You can see that's pretty darn bad. So, um, yeah, this got, this got beat up pretty badly, and uh, I've ordered from Sir Toys before. I got, um, uh, I got those two Japanese Super Sentais, whatever it was, it Battle Strike Team is what the translated name is. So I got both of those from Sir Toys. I got um, the third party Evasion Mode Optimus Prime. I got him from them. Were those the only ones? 
that and that. I'm probably forgetting one. Those might be the only ones I've gotten from them, but in any event. So I've ordered from them before and I've never had this problem. So this is uh, this is fairly fairly significant problem. So I'm hoping that the interior box uh, I mean like is is I can tell the interior box might be damaged. I'm not certain. But on the other hand, I've got enough storage problems enough as it is, so having a collapsed box might not be such a bad idea. As I understand it, this is a knockoff of a third party item. So this this is a new one for me because I've never I've never purchased a knockoff of a third party transformer, you know, an unofficially licensed third party toy that was designed to supplement uh, an official transformer set. So this is this is new territory for me. So I don't know about quality. Like I'm aware of the third party design. I can't think of what it's called. The captions will take care of it for me. I can't think of what the original third party design is. Oh, that's why it got squashed so easily. There is no box. It's just styrofoam packaging. Uh, well, hopefully it uh, it's filled with this stuff. I'm hoping they survived. So there's uh, there's like six different colors. But first things first. I love it when Sir Toys does this. Um, another little. Oh wow! Is it going to be that bad? I don't know what it's going to do. Sir Toys uh, generously has provided me with another. Um, I don't know if you even know if these are knockoffs or like little thingy. Uh, ordinarily, I'd call it a minicon, but I don't. I think they're called Titan Masters these days. How do I transform you? You know, I think it's trying to imitate a side swipe from Bayformers. I think that's what this is trying to imitate. But I don't think it's a knockoff. Well, it might be. It's the, Oh, yeah, yeah, it's Sideswipe. Yeah, it's his face, and uh, it's his um, uh, it's his chest panel. But I want to know how the heck I'm supposed to change the legs. <laughs> this is bad. This is bad. That's stuck in there. Okay, so he will never, ever stand up ever and it's out of focus I know it's out of focus but uh, just rest assured it is it is sideswipe from Bayformers but um, it, it can't stand up it doesn't have feet it has legs but it can't stand up because the legs don't well the, the legs do move forward and backwards but it's it's kind of sideswipe a sideswipe had a cape I guess so is it gonna stand up yeah it, it'll stand up but it's 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 tripod mode so um thank you <laughs> it even has a little uh the 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 corvette logo there so <laughs> he has wheels molded into his w wait a minute what okay now i need to investigate it how did are you supposed to be able to turn this Nope. So he's got wheels molded into the front of his feet in addition to the wheels that can actually roll. Uh, all right. If he had like some, some additional hip joints aside from the ball joints or if he had some ankle tilt or ankle swivel or something like that then you could you could do something with it. Those would be actual feet but it's completely sabotaged itself. Okay. So, I'm going to put stick that in there. So, anyways, uh, yeah, a knockoff knock of a third party. You better have... Okay, good. All right. And I'm not going to need that anymore because it's all contained in a single bag. Just just a zip bag. I don't even know if this knockoff of a third part of an unofficially licensed or of an unlicensed third party that I like. I, I don't even know if this came in its own box. I don't know how knockoffs of third parties work because I've never done this before. So uh, I don't even know if the original third party 
design is uh, is even made anymore. I mean, Combiner Wars happened two and a half years ago, so I don't know if it's going to work. Anyways, um, they had um, like five or six different colors, and each one for one of the different Combiner Wars gestalts. There was blue, there was gray, there was white, there was black, uh, there was purple, and they might have had like a creamy yellow or something like that. So, excuse me. Obviously, it's designed to, you know, you can get whatever one you want to, although it's not restricted in terms of you have to get this one in order to match it up with this one. It's kind of up to you. Um, Prime 92 recommended the silver colored version or the gray colored version. Me, I decided to go with the black colored version just because it, it seemed to fit a little bit better. So let's start with the hands. Oh, you know, I should totally transform it. Yeah, I'm not going to. Which has a lot of hinges on it. Ball joint at the thumb. That's a ball joint right there. Uh, and it actually allows for some space for the thumb to, to raise upwards a little bit. Wow. That's nice, and that's completely out of focus. Now, moment of truth. And the fingers are individually articulated as well. It's not like they're they're pasted together like this. But the thumb has at least one joint on it. Well, two joints. It's got one one at the knuckle hand, that's got one up here. And then each finger has two joints on it. Cool. Good friction on them all too. You know, I wonder if this actually is a third party, or, you know, knockoff of a third party. I'm wondering now. Just, it seems seems to be good enough, so, I don't know. Hmm. No instructions, though. I'm just going to have to figure it out on my own. Fortunately, I did a little research beforehand, so I, I have a rough idea of what I'm supposed to do. Um, so it's got two hands. Uh, and unlike the Combiner Wars version, it's a dedicated right hand and a dedicated left hand. So you can't you can't swap them back and forth, and you also cannot use them as uh, as feet and vice versa. And then along the inner side of the palm is a little handle that you fold down, and here you have a little rifle that you can make out of just one hand. That's nice which means that one of the bots can carry these around when they want to, so nice. And obviously the other hand can do this as well. This is the uh, this is the right hand, so cool, cool. And it's, it's, it's interesting, the, uh, the little handle for this rifle mode is different from the peg that's used to attach it to the, to the gestalt. Nice. So it's very solidly in one mode or the other, but never both at the same time. Cool. And then you have uh, a dedicated left foot and right foot. These are much larger and looking uh, very, very nasty, nice and detailed. Primarily in black. There's a little bit of red on these grills in the front on either side. And then, of course, the sole has uh, all the important stuff. Yeah, that looks like it comes out, but I don't know how. Oh, it's a, uh, it's a screw hole cover. Cool. Fireworks. Does this extend? Oh, it'd be cool if this barrel extends. Nope, it doesn't extend, but it does pop off for safety reasons. I should note the black version is kind of a generic bazooka looking thing. Just an energy bazooka of some kind. Uh, and then there's another version, it's like a Gatling cannon, and then there's another version, it's like a little more of a pew pew laser gun. So it's it's kind of mirroring what the uh, the official versions are, just, you know, writ larger. Really? Is that all there is? To it? Oh yeah, I forgot. There's, a, there's another half! I could have sworn there was more to the transform transformation than just that. Gosh, if only I had instructions to work with. So one foot becomes, hang on to it, becomes two bazookas, becomes two laser bazookas, energy bazookas, busters, if you must. 
So that's really neat. That's probably going to go on the tanks. That's great. I forgot something that that uh, Hasbro and Takar didn't do is there's a tiny little rubbery felt pad on either gun on either bazooka or whatever it is so uh, it helps with friction a little bit right there nice okay so this is a left foot and then this is a right foot yes Yes, cool. No duplicates. Yay! I don't have to do the Titans Returns brawn thing all over again. <laughs> you know, I almost wonder if it'd be worth it to put away uh, Lyo Kaiser's own, his, like, generic one-size-fits-all. These are all the same. There's two gray ones and there's two black ones. I'm tempted to just, you know, put them back in the box or something, which is over there. And then we still have Ion Scythe. So, you know, he doesn't get old. Ion Scythe can hang out. I'll see if I can find a new spot to mount him. There's Ion Scythe, looking very Transformers Prime Soundwave, if I do say so myself. Not so much Laser Beak. I don't remember what Laser Beak looked like. I wonder what the friction's going to be like in the uh, in the connection points. Oh yeah, the update. Um, the the reason I went this way is because I wrote to Hasbro the very next day. After after I posted this or after I made this video, I wrote to them and I or, no after I posted the video, I wrote to Hasbro or I did one of their live chat associates or whatever it is, and uh, they said uh, unfortunately we're out of stock because we're not making that product anymore. And they said contact you will probably want to contact the uh, the store you purchased it from, which was TF Source. Yeah, it was TF Source. I think yeah something like that. I don't remember anymore. But anyways, um, yeah, they said they, and TF Source said, we don't have any more. Because, you know, it's, it's been over a year. They still had Lyo Kaisers, but they didn't, whoa. Okay, Drill Horn just popped apart for some stupid reason. I may have to take the leg off in order to attach this. Boy, you're really not wanting to, what's happening here? But anyways, uh, TF Source shot me down. Like I could, I could have bought a second one or done an exchange. I could have done that, but like it's already opened. I don't want to do an exchange. I just and keep in mind, um, I got both Lyo Kaiser and Computron. I purchased them on the same day, and they both came from TF Source for whatever reason. One got to my house like a day before but they were mailed from different locations maybe it was like where their overstock was or their out of stock stuff were, in, were moved to different locations I don't know how they work so whatever I was not able to procure a simple replacement for that single piece I probably have to do an all all or nothing kind of arrangement Get in there. already these feet are looking way better just because they're bigger you can actually bet that was one of the problems with combiner wars is the the hands are always so small because or rather the feet were so small because they had to they had to be hands as well you know no matter how much knuckle crunching the things did they were still ultimately too small and that was part of the problem with them but uh, I'm sure there would have been some ways that they could have bulked these up but in addition to being too small the other problem with the combiner wars is it's just the nature of the beast when it comes to ratcheting posability and larger combining figures. Uh, Super Sentai doesn't have to deal with this because they don't put articulation to their figures. They prefer stability versus articulation, as opposed to Hasbro and Takara, where it's kind of the opposite. They, ever since Beast Wars, they lean towards articulation and posability as opposed to stability. You know, so sometimes they're back heavy, which, or or they'll sacrifice. Um, what am I thinking of? They would sacrifice, you know, they'll put a gimmick in when they can't get articulation done properly. 
But, uh, okay. Lyokaiser, we're, uh, we're making this happen here. Okay, so, it's not a big change, but on the other hand, yeah, it is a big change. Lyokaiser now has two feet and two leg. Okay, I, I, iron, uh, no, that's drill horn. Is that what he's called? Is he called Drillhorn still? Yeah, he's still called Drillhorn. Drillhorn, for whatever reason, he doesn't like keeping his ankles together, so it's kind of ruining what I'm trying to do here. Of course, it didn't give me that problem with the official feet, so whatever. He's probably protesting. Doesn't like it much. And then the back of the hills, they're either rocket engines, or he can, like, kick somebody and shoot lasers out of his ankles, something like that. And then he has hands, fully articulated hands. He's got like, uh, he's got articulating fingers that would like make uh, Armada Unicron and Cybertron Primus proud. You know, he's got that level of articulation. And the friction is strong and I'm not going to fight it. But he still very much wants to fall his ass over. And then, I probably shouldn't have done that with him, with Hellbat. I called it Felbat. Turns out I was right. It's actually called Hellbat in the original version. Uh, which, okay, whatever. Let's see, what was the name of the pink one? Wow, I totally don't remember his name all of a sudden. Anyways, I'm going to get these into fists. Just show that you can get it into a fist. So you can get those hands into fists. And then there are, let's see, is there? No, there is not. There is a, there is a C-shaped hole running down the middle of the palm. I'm watching to make sure it doesn't tip over. There's a C-shaped hole running down the center of the hand. So you can slip something into the hole and then wrap the fingers around it. So it's not that the fingers themselves hold the weapons, but rather that C-shaped hole down the center of the hand. We'll, we'll keep it in place. And then you also have wrist articulation this way as well, which the Combiner Wars figures didn't have. Uh, the only thing you can't do is this. You can't do this with the wrist. So I don't think you can. Yeah. You're stuck. But, but I mean, the ability to do this is nice. That's actually a posability option that a lot of combining robots can't do. Hell, there's, there's a lot of articulated figures. They'll have a ball joint, which kind of covers all the axes, and that, that's all well and good. But the ability to do this in order to hold a sword is kind of a rare thing, unless you have like a dedicated replaceable hand. Having a wrist do this, or yeah, having it bend downwards like that is unusual. So that's, uh, that's actually pretty good. In fact, let's put this to the test. Trying to think of what the name of the, the pink colored jet is, because I totally don't remember it. Oh, oh, what was it, uh, uh, something guy. What was what was the the name of this? Something guy. Guyhawk. That was his name. So Guyhawk. This this is what I was just talking about. So ordinarily the wrist is, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. So you can turn the wrist side to side, and you may, you might get this level of articulation. But kind of the important thing when you're holding a sword, listen to Mr. Swordmaster, Ava Unit 4A over here, is to be able to tilt that wrist downwards, which actually can have an effect on uh, the position of the blade, or even the position of the gun. If you want to, if you want to hold a gun with the wrist down, you can tilt it like this. Or you can have the wrist pointed downwards, like that. Because people don't shoot like this, they shoot down like that. Says the guy who's never fired a real weapon in his life. So yeah, that's, that's a welcome bit of articulation right there. And it has no impact, uh, again, it has no impact whatsoever on the fingers. Hopefully my camera is discriminate enough uh, you can see the handle sitting in there. I cannot see it. Hopefully you can. Yep, there it is. Okay. So you can see that the handle 
isn't gripped by the fingers at all is that C-shaped hole that runs down the center of the hand. Which is what Optimus Prime Premium, di Premium Edition, the uh, was it Asia Premium Series, Asian Premium Edition or whatever it is, that is what that should have done. The whole articulated fingers thing, I'm still sore about that, so... Eh. If this is a knockoff of a third party, it's pretty well done. I'm I'm suddenly not certain, or I don't remember exactly. Wait, do these bend independently? Wait, do these bend independently? Yeah, they do. So then why is that not... Oh, because it's not designed to do it. Okay, so... Um, how do I say this? These two fingers can only go this far. They'll only bend 90 degrees. At this knuckle, they'll only bend 90 degrees. But then these two fingers at this joint here can bend down a little further. So there is a slight difference in the way the way it can grip things. So ultimately it kinda it kinda ends up like this. If you if you could picture it that way. That's that's what that hand does. Oh, by the way, the other big complaint with uh, Combiner Wars feet and hands, aside from the fact that the hands, it's not that the hands were too big, but rather that the feet were too small, it, it wasn't stable. None of them were ever stable, which is the whole reason why this third-party set, those feet are huge. I would dare say, let's see, I've got copy turn right here. His feet were much larger. He's going to run them through. Yeah, I'd say they're... Actually, it's... Ow, 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 ow. Oh. The human hand was not meant to bend that way, Eva. Give me a break. I would dare say that Lyo Kaiser's third-party feet are actually slightly larger. So, but, I mean, still, that's, that's pretty good. So, now the feet have a dedicated ankle joint. It's not much, but it's not ratcheting it's not a ratcheting joint like it was on computron or victorion megatronia it's just it's just a, a friction joint and it's not a i don't think it's a ball joint i'm a liar it is a ball joint so which you guys can totally see so i'm gonna get this back out okay so um there's a it is a ball joint so you actually can tilt it out quite a bit this is the foot that I took about earlier, and for whatever reason, it's not going back together. Go back together! Arr. Okay, so you do get an ankle tilt. And you also get a ball-jointed little bit of, a, of an ankle forward and back. But hopefully that ball joint's going to last for quite a bit. You can actually get it into some actual poses, which is kind of the important thing. Uh, if you have it, if you have your ankle ratcheting only once and that's it you can't really get nuanced with the, the hips and with the knees so you, at that point excuse me hiccups suddenly at that point you kind of need um, a, a two axis or, or even a three axis um, ankle joint you know now that I think about it I kind of wish they'd provided a uh, um, <clears throat> kind of a generic one size fits all non-accessory accessory that just had um, a bunch of uh, holes and um, uh, and pegs sticking out of it so you could take all the random weapons and then stick on stick it on there and then just turn it into a mega blaster of some kind that it could hold that would have been kind of a neat thing for them to do but oh well I'm not going to complain too loudly about that one you can go always, always go find a third party. Yeah, this is already way more stable than uh, the original feet. How stable is it? Well, oh, don't shine it directly into the light. I wasn't thinking when I said that. You can see. Let's see. You cannot see this way. You can see he actually is a little spread-legged. By the way, here's the old computer, and then the other side of that is the current machine, and there's the jack for my headset. Poor thing. So yeah, there are the two machines. 
But anyways, uh, yeah, I can actually... The, the, this isn't exactly the best angle I could get it into. The, the, the camera is kind of limited on what I can do with it. But I think you get the idea. I can actually... I can actually get him into an actual, like, spread leg kind of pose. And I apologize for the shaky camera. So there's Lyo Kaiser rocking some stuff. Oh, I cannot! I cannot wait. Now that I think about, it, I cannot wait to get him and they'll get those tank arms on him. Oh, that'll be awesome! Cool. I like it. And then as a bonus, the hands and the feet both turn into blasters. The feet turn into two cannons each, and each hand turns into a, a rifle. That's that's wonderful. I love it. That's probably that that's probably the third party's way of saying, you know what? Screw these things. You know, just put these back in the box or just sell them on eBay for like $150 or something each. You know, it's been known to happen. So there's my upgraded dude. I like oh, this is great. I love it. Would I get a set for Computron? Nah, Computron's fine the way it is. I'm not gonna worry about it. I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have done this. I, well, I might have done it. I probably wouldn't have done it even if I hadn't been missing a limb. So, mission accomplished. I am done. Yay, Lyo Kaiser is finished. Now I just gotta figure out what to do with the Desaurus's head. Because it's just kind of doing a weird thing. By the way, it occurred to me the other day, you know, if Tazaris is, you know, this color and that color and is an homage to whatever, the thing about Lyokaiser is that his helmet was originally that turquoise green color. It's kind of sea green color, so why the head was painted black? I'm not entirely certain. Yeah. So, okay, I am satisfied. It is done. It is done, and I am pleased. And so with that, this is AVUnit4A saying thanks for tuning in.